Yeah, yeah. Looking at my watch, it say it's time to get it. Yeah, talking about my goddess every day. Yo, yo, yo. What's good, good people? Great day and great morning. It's uh, it's pretty early in the morning. I'm called. I'm from. I'm home. I'm home, and I'm thankful for being home. This is part two. We are in part two of the of the message of shut up, listen, establish your name, and prosper. We're in Proverbs chapter 10. We're going through verses 9 through 11 this morning. And uh, I don't want to talk too much. So we're just going to get into it. So, Lord God, your name is holy. And your will is done. I pray that you deliver a timely word, a necessary word to your people through me today. I pray that they not only receive your word, but know how to apply it and how to walk in it. So may they recognize the truth of the text, the truth of what you want us to know and what you want us to walk in. And may we realize and recognize exactly how to walk this thing out. We thank you, Lord, for giving, giving abundantly, and I thank you, Lord, for your people searching. It's in Jesus Christ, name I pray. Amen. All right, all right, let's get started. So, verse 9. He that walks uprightly walks surely, but he that perverteth his way shall be known. He that winketh with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. All right, I'm going to start with reading first, some stuff I wrote, and we're going to go at it. We're going to go for it. So, the word surely is batak. It means securely or safety. So, that's verse 9. So, he that walks uprightly walks in security, surely, in safety. So, the security we're looking for, because a lot of us are after security, stable. Be, things being stable, right? Something we can count on. So the security that we're looking for, it doesn't come from money. I think that's an interesting thing. I think that's a really interesting thing because most of the time when people talk about, I want to be secure, I want to be safe, right? A lot of the times it's tied directly to money and what you we perceive it can do for us. But that's not where it comes from. The scripture here is telling us that it comes from righteousness. Now, isn't that something? Isn't that something? Let me get back to it. I'm not saying we don't need money because we do, right? The majority of what we want to accomplish require money. It's like our business necessities, our basic necessities, really like food and shelter require money. But the question is, how do you sleep at night? <laughs> I know we don't talk, we don't want to talk about that, but I want to ask you, how do you sleep at night? Right? Because you can have all the basic necessities, you can have an abundance of material possessions and not be able to sleep well at night. So I want to ask, when you lay down in the bed to sleep, how is your rest? How is your rest? See, when we live righteously, we don't have to worry about a past that is coming back to haunt us, right? When you embrace your journey in life and accept where you've been, and most importantly, identify what sin you need to repent from and change your ways, then we get the security we desire. So knowing you're in right standing with God and your neighbor, there's no need to run, right? I, I want to slow down here. I want to take a moment here. When you don't have to run from anything, when you know you haven't wronged anyone at the end of the day, when you can look at yourself consistently and say, how do I not line up with the word of God? How am I not representing the walk of Christ? Repent, pray on it, and then change your ways is the most important. You turn from your way. That's the, that's the part of repentance that we forget about. We don't just ask for forgiveness and confess our sins, but we turn, we change our ways, right? If we're doing that on a consistent basis, as we should be, as we should be, and aligning our walk, our life, 
with how God commanded us to be and who God commanded us to be, then he will establish our walk. He will establish our way. And we don't have to worry about looking over our shoulders. See, it's a different kind of walk a believer is commanded to walk out, right? And you, me, we, right? We are the example of that. So how much of, how good of a job are we doing at that? But knowing you haven't wronged your neighbor, knowing you don't have a reason for anybody to be coming out to you for any kind of reason. I'm not saying stuff won't happen, right? Because you cannot wrong somebody and people can break in your house or something. I've had it happen, right? Just, just to be honest. Those things t- tend to be more like, a, you know, more like one-offs, but not something that you have to be concerned about coming back to haunt you or coming, or you don't, ha- don't got to worry about wronging anybody. I believe y'all get it, right? But the longer you run, I want you to get this, the longer you want run, the worse the problem gets. So you got to face it with the consequences and all. So pray and ask God for mercy. Not only will you rest better, but it'll make you a stronger and better person. So you got to be willing to face the wrongdoings that you've done, the mistakes that you've made in the past, the things you said about people that you shouldn't have, right? You got to face all this stuff. You can't keep running. You cannot keep running. You got to stop, right? (laughs) Get quiet, get still. Acknowledge what you've done. Repent from it. Probably confess. Accept those consequences as they come. And in the meantime, you're correcting your walk. I like to call it burning the candle at birth in, both ends. Birth. <laughs> you think I'm in a Medea poem or something, right? Burning the candle at both ends. So as you are correcting your current walk, your present, you're facing what's happened in the past and it brightens up your future because now you don't have to worry about anything else coming back to haunt you later on. You secure your walk. You can walk safely. What you've been looking for the whole time, you've actually been running from it. Come on, y'all. I want you to hear this. What you've been wanting the entire time, you've been running from it because you won't face the consequences of the past. And the reason why you are where you are right now is because of the things you've done in the past that you're running from. So unless you identify that and then repent and change your way, you're going to be you're going to be running for a long time. 10, 15, 20 years from now, you're going to be trying to figure out why you haven't gotten the result you wanted. Why this? Why that? How come this? How come that? How come God? How come? And it's it's you. It's not it's not the world. It's not the people. It's not this or that. It's you. You're getting the same result because you're still the same person. So how long, how long will you, how long will you not uphold what God told us to do or commanded us to do? How long will you run from who he told you and called you to be, right? I'm gonna keep moving because I got some other things I wanna talk about. So remember what's done in the dark comes to light. It's gonna come to the light, right? What's done in the dark comes to light. So what is it that you need to repent from today? I want you to spend time there. Spend some time there. What is it that you need to repent from today? Um, Verse 10. So he that winks with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. So we, we, (laughs) I I thought this one was pretty interesting when I read it. He that winks with the eye, because, you know, and and joking, they say mischief because it is mischief. But when someone winks, you know, they give you a little... It's like winking, and what do they what do they go do? They go deceive somebody right after, right after that, or they go trick somebody as a joke or having fun or whatever the case is. Um, it shows deception or mischief, right? But it say, "He who winks with the eye causes sorrow, causes sorrow." Um, that's more of. I love how sometimes when you look at the Word of God, you can not only just see like the literal part, right? Just because someone is winking, it causes sorrow. It's like, no, the winking comes from a state of being, right? The winking comes from a state of being and that state of being causes sorrow. It's saying it's a certain type of person that does this behavior. Hear this y'all, there's a certain type of person that behaves this way. 
and that behavior or that type of person, it brings sorrow. That's just what it is, right? Mischief, deception, who was the father of lies? <laughs> who was the father of lies? We already know it was, the, it was Satan, the snake in the garden. Y'all don't want to hear this. I know you don't want to hear this. But a prating fool shall fall. Babbling fool. I talked about this one in the last one. A babbling fool or a fool of lips. What I think is interesting about this one is, and not just interesting, but we know that what comes from the mouth is from your heart. Sometimes, and I want you to hear this, it's better to just shut up and listen I was telling my son this the other day and I told him this because a teacher my, one of my teachers my fourth grade teacher Miss Rogers White I believe she's passed now but I remember her telling me if you don't open your mouth people will never know how dumb you are <laughs> I know y'all don't want to hear this either she said she, she was talking directly to me and not because I was some foolish young kid because I mean we all we all were at some point right this is fourth grade fourth grade I was a pretty I, at least I think I was a pretty good student or kid whatever the case is but I was I was up to no good y'all I was I was sneaky yo I was sneaky with it when I was uh breaking rules and doing stuff I was sneaky with it don't get me wrong but Miss White I believe she knew more about me than I thought she did because I'm a, I'm a kid I don't have her perspective right but I didn't talk much and I believe that to be one of the reasons why people perceived me to be as intelligent or as smart as, the, as people said I was when I was younger, you know? It's because I didn't talk a lot. When you don't talk, you can listen, you can watch, you can learn and observe. And that's the key. When you're opening your mouth, when you're talking, you're not learning. You're just listening to yourself, right? Saying stuff that's in you. You're regurgitating a lot of the times, right? Unless the spirit is using you, which is a whole nother topic, but I won't go there. But a fool of lips shall fall, shall fall. So if you're not wise with the use of your mouth, of your words, the most powerful thing that God gave us that he equipped us with, because he used his word to create, to establish. He created us in his image. So what we are speaking, right, how we are using our tongue, we have to be wise with how we speak and how we use our mouth. And if you aren't wise to use your tongue in a way that it should be used, then shut up. Shut up. Because a prating fool shall fall. And it, re it reminds me of James, I believe it's in chapter one, where he talks about, I know it's in the book of James. Don't quote me on the chapter though, and I apologize for that. But James talks about when we observe the word of God, we look at our natural face in the glass. Natural face intended, how we were created to be. The word of God, is our natural face. Come on, y'all. So when we read this word of God, we're seeing how we are supposed to be. We're reading the instructions for how we were created. This is how you use my creation, is what God is saying. This is it. This is These are the instructions. But what we do is we walk away and straightway, right away, forget who we are. We forget as soon as we walk away from the word. And that's why Jesus, we see him spending time in the word, showing us that we're supposed to be meditating on this thing day and night, day and night, right? But it talks about in that book, how with our tongues, we can set on fire our path in life, our destiny, where we're supposed to go. So how powerful are the words you speak if they can even destroy the path that God has carved out for you. I want you, to, I want you to hear this. So you need to know that you need to shut your mouth. Just you gotta, at some point, you have to tame your tongue and you have to use it in a righteous way. And you have to understand that God gave it to you, but then he also told you how to use it. How to use it. So I want you to understand that. Now, verse 11, the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. Righteousness isn't an outward, an outward thing, right? It's not because you put on a certain pair of clothes or because you, you know, don't do this or don't do like righteousness isn't it is that. It comes from within. It's your heart. It's your state of being. Your alignment with God. 
And then that, of course, produces certain types of fruit. See, what we work to do as humans with an, a bad understanding, I'll say, is we read what we are supposed to do and then we just say, okay, I'll just go do these things. And that makes me righteous. You got it. We got it backwards, right? You got it as do, <laughs> do, have, be, or whatever the case is. But the reality is it's be, right? You be, and then because of your state of who you are, then you'll do certain things. And because you do certain things, then you'll have those results. What is that meaning in this context? It means as you align your heart, the inner parts of us, well, who God told us to be, right? Then we'll outwardly do the things that we're supposed to do because it's in our heart. We'll speak a certain kind of way. We'll see a certain kind of thing. And then after that, we'll reap the blessings, right? The prosperity that God said, that, that word blessing. We'll reap those promises because we are who we're supposed to be. And that's what God is judging our heart in the first place. So again, where's your heart and how do you sleep at night? I want to know how you sleep at night. I want to know what's coming out of your mouth. I want to know what thoughts are running through your head and are you aligning them with Christ? And if they're not right, if it's not in alignment with where it's supposed to be, shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. Shut your mouth. Establish your name. And when this word say establish your name, that's walking righteously, walking in security, right? Lining up with God, correcting your own heart. Mm -hmm. And you have to listen to do that. You got to hear the word of God and then we'll reap those blessings. We'll reap the promises that he gave us. That's it. That's it. I don't think I need to go any, any longer than that. Yep. And in the last part of that verse, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Lord God, your name is holy and your will is done. I thank you for your word. I thank you for speaking to your people. Repentance is always a necessary message. But most importantly, Lord, I mean, your people hear how to correct themselves, not just how to read the word and spend time in it, which is all good stuff, but how we can actually make the adjustments, how we can actually fix this heart. We can't do it alone, Lord. We can't do it alone. We need, we need you. So may your people who have heard this message, who have heard this word, may they not only receive you and receive your son as their savior but may they understand how to walk this thing out and may you walk them through that journey thank you lord for your obedient children thank you lord for your boundless mercy it's in jesus Christ's name i pray amen all right peoples god bless talk to y'all soon later